Welcome to my little AI world. Hyper-realistic social simulation I created with AI because, oh well, it's something I can't experience in real life. By now, everyone watching this video knows about ChatGPT or maybe DeepSeek. You might use it for school assignments, asking questions, or maybe even fulfilling social needs. But what if we could take it further? Instead of just interacting with one AI, I'm going to make multiple AI models interact with each other. Not just two, but ten of them. To make it even more engaging, I can also jump into any conversation they're having. So how did I exactly do this? First of all, simply showing text on the screen would have been too boring. Instead, I gave each GPT its own avatar. Since this is a social simulation game, each character has a unique personality designed to spark conflict and keep the interactions interesting. Unfortunately, I can't share the exact prompt I used uh, because that might get me demonetized, but let's just say they're spicy enough to generate some drama. I started by designing the environment where these NPCs would live. Okay, so this is the map I ended up with. Um, there are actually 9 residents here, uh, including the player that would be 10. Uh, I said 10 AIs previously, I mean 9's close enough. Anyways, so to give you a little bit of an overview, this area is where, so to say, the lower class people would live. Here's like where the middle class people would live. And this is the upper class resident. And then, you know, this is um, where a very lower class person would live. So the idea behind this is that maybe with some sort of financial gap in the AI society that would also cause some kind of a conflict, hopefully. Then I implemented basic player controls so you can click anywhere to move. And I also worked on bubbles, but this wasn't entirely easy. Okay, so let me just show you the problem I have right now. And it's kind of driving me insane. So here's a test display, right? And it's supposed to be coming from uh, whoever this guy is, Johnny, I believe. Then I want to make it so that the handle is pointing towards Johnny. And also from the camera's view, I want to make sure that Johnny is also not covered by the chat bubble. So right now it's kind of bad, right? So something like this. Okay. However, if there's another person standing here, in that case, the chat bubble should move downwards. Like so. Nothing works. But eventually I got it working, so that was all good. Hey guys, Editor Coder here. As you can see from the screen, Johnny actually couldn't make it to the game because GPT kept calling him either John or Johnny or Johnny with two N's. So I had to force him a name change. Let me explain how these game objects in Unity execute GPT generated actions. The process is straightforward. I provide context in the prompt and I define available actions and their descriptions. And most importantly, I tell AI to output actions in JSON format. This allows Unity to interpret and execute the desired actions. The biggest challenge was managing character memory. Currently, every NPC action is stored and used to inform their next move. However, this creates two problems. The prompts get extremely long and GPT struggles to process all that information effectively. My solution? Summarization. Every five actions get condensed into a concise summary. The same happens with conversations when they get too lengthy. An alternative approach would be using AI embeddings to store actions in a vector database, making it easier to retrieve relevant context later. While this might be better for long-term memory, it proved slower than my current summarization method. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That said, embeddings would be ideal for maintaining longer-term character memories. Character relationships are also tracked and summarized as they evolve through interactions. Enough with the technical details, you probably just want to see the GPTs interacting. Alright, so this is my little AI world. Um, you can see people are moving around, which is kind of cool. Uh, okay, well, I just got ignored there. And also another feature that I kind of added was that in case two NPCs bump into each other, then as you can see right here, they also know that they're being blocked by another NPC, which is pretty cool. Then they get into a little bit of a small conflict and then and at some point the NPC has to go around so that both can keep on moving. Okay, so I just caught some bunch of people talking bad about Isabella. And this is quite scary, honestly, at this point. And Isabella borrowing money from Liam, that was never in the prompt. And they somehow just made that up. And then now they're talking about it. I don't know who started this, but yeah, it is kind of scary. Hi, Lucas. The guy's name's Lucas, by the way. 
Oh, not much. Have you heard what happened to Alice? You just spark up some conflict already? You won't be believe it. Oh my goodness, and just about as I was gonna say, Alice appeared. And now Victoria is also here. Oh, Alice. No. Nothing, Alice. Let's get out. Oh my god, I also just realized the chat bubble was still broken. To spark even more conflict and have some more fun, I've added secret corners. One is positioned right here, and the another one is positioned right here. Alright, so I kind of feel like it was a mistake to make this secret corner thing. Because now everyone's here, and then this is no longer even a secret corner. And please don't tell me they are all gathered up in the secret corner again. That would be kind of... Oh my goodness. Guys. Editor Coder here, for some reason I'm not talking in the video. I told everyone that Isabella, the character, is hiding her jewelries at her house, you know, so that everyone would leave this corner. But everyone thinks it's a treasure hunt, but it's not really a treasure hunt. Yes, yes, treasure hunt, it is. Everyone go to Isabella's house. <laughs> I can't believe this. So, yeah. I guess the project definitely helped me to get through mandatory social activities to not go insane, so it was definitely a great project. Let me know in the comments what you think of this project, and potentially also how I should expand on this in the future. I might make a sequel to this video. This has been Semicoder. I kind of know how to code.